Hey guys, Nicole here. I'm still doing stuff and today what I'm doing is opening the March 2015 Darby box. This month it's really light. I have no clue what kind of craft they could have sent me, but I'm really looking forward to it. Okay, we have some uh, needlepoint canvas here. My grandmother used to use this all the time like with bigger holes when I was a kid and did crafts with it and we kids always like used to beg her for the scraps so that we could do our own project. Um, it looks like the project is in Omber Needlepoint Cases. Um, it's kind of neat and they show some other ideas. They've made like a art wall hanging thing, a sign, some little necklaces, coasters, um, paper clip top. Those are really cute. And whatever, oh, some sort of gift tag. Okay. This explains why it was so light because uh, the needlepoint canvas and yarn and this not very heavy so I'm gonna give it a shot. I've gone to the website and um, I've seen a lot of comments that people thought this was a hard project to do or they were actually irritated because it's something they've already learned how to do so um, I'm gonna go ahead and attempt to do this and hopefully my video will help people who have been having trouble understanding the Darby Smart instructions figure it out. Also, uh, one of the things people were mentioning is they felt the project was uh, a little bit on the cheap side, that they could have purchased these materials themselves, but Darby Smart revealed that these yarns are actually imported from Germany and unavailable in the States. I think if they would have left the label on the yarns, um, they could have avoided that problem. People would have realized they were getting something a little more unique. But I'm going to go ahead and read this over and try to figure out how to do it. All right, so I've got my glasses and then I'm just going to fold my plastic canvas over them to make sure I get the right size for this project. And then I will make a little incision there and then cut along that grid. think that's going to be high enough. All right. And then we'll go ahead and cut it the other way. And then I've got the little square that I'm going to use for my glasses case. So you want to cut about an arm's length of yarn, it says, and then I wet the end that I'm going to pass through the needle with my spit. I know, that's lovely, isn't it? But it does make it pass through the eye of the needle fairly easily, and um, it helps that it is a big needle eye to start with. So then what you're going to do is pick a corner, pass the needle through, and pull the, whoops, <laughs> don't pull it all the way through like I did. Pull it until you have about an inch left on the end. So you have an inch hanging through, and then hold it out of the way on the back side. And to make the chevron pattern, what they did was counted six. So count, starting with the hole you came through, one, two, three, whoops, three, four, five, six, and then up five, counting the hole that you start with. So one, two, three, four, five, and then pass the needle down through there. And that's going to give you the angle you're working on. And it gets much easier, whoops, don't lose your back thread. It gets much easier as you go because all you have to do is come back up through the hole that's above where you started and then go back down the hole that's above where you went through. So you're gonna keep doing that the entire length of the canvas and you're also wrapping it over that inch you left in the back. So you're going to secure that thread, whoops, that yarn in the back. So up and make sure you pull it tight and then down. And you can see it's getting a nice gradient as you go and up, down. Very easy, very straightforward and again you're catching your starting thread in the back. So I'm going to do that for this entire row of the plastic canvas. As you can see, I'm running out of yarn and I'm about in the middle of my first row. So I'm going to pass the needle back down to the back side 
and the yarn came off my needle, which is good. That's what I wanted it to do anyway. And then I'm going to do the same thing and cover it up like I did when I started. So we're going to cut a new piece. I think I'll make it a little longer this time so I don't have to cut new pieces as often. Get a new piece on the needle. I just swallowed freaking yarn fuzz because I wet this with my tongue and it was not comfortable. Ah, and I gotta lick it again. All right, let's try that again. <laughs> Yarn fuzz not tasty. All right, so thread your needle with the new piece and then make sure your tail is on the back. Go ahead and start where you would have normally been coming up. Pull it through just like you did the very first time we did this and leave a tail on there as well. So take your two tails, hold them along the back of the canvas like that, and then just start wrapping over them again and continue doing that until you reach the end of the row. I've got the first row done and came through in the middle there. So let's see if I can do this right. We wanna count six over, counting the one that you're down in. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and then up five, counting this one. One, two, three, four, five. So remember, this is the hole you're coming up through. And then you're going to bring it down to make your chevron pattern through this hole. So you're going to repeat that going all the way back up along there. And then when you get to the top, same thing, you're gonna go back to doing it this way and do that until your entire square is filled. I didn't really see anywhere in the instructions where they covered how to fill in these gaps you're gonna have, but you know, I'll come up with a solution by the end. So you're gonna have some gaps along the edge for now. I ended up taking a little break and leaving my stuff out. And of course, being a box, my cat decided she had to move into it and help with this project. All right, so I basically covered my entire piece of canvas other than these little bits. And um, I still have my yarn coming off from doing the design. And what I'm going to do is start filling these in. So I'm gonna go into the next, the next hole in. And then bring it into the center hole. And it's just gonna get smaller as I go. I'm just trying to fill up this canvas. And one of the things I have been finding if I use a really long piece of yarn is it will bunch up like that and then the rest of the yarn won't be as smooth. So you might wanna work with smaller pieces. So then I'm gonna come in from this side and do the same thing. And I also got really fortunate that my canvas was exactly the size I needed to do a full row. If your canvas is a little too big and your glasses will still fit, I would chop it down to the perfect size. If not, just um, do a shorter row of this on the end. You're not probably going to see it a whole lot by the time it's folded over and then stitched together. So do what you have to do. And this bottom one actually, instead of doing two separate ones, I probably could have brought it across and made one big stitch. But since I already did it that way, I'm just gonna make the other side match. 
Okay, so that finished off one row. I'm going to pull it behind and do the same thing in the next row. When you've finished your first edge, go ahead and flip it over and then just going to tuck the yarn under some of the loops on the back. And then carefully cut it. It's hidden in there. Make sure you leave enough. Leave about an inch or so. So then on the other side, you'll do the same thing in reverse. You'll pass your needle under the loops. Pull the thread through. Sorry, the yarn through. And make sure you catch the tail on the back before it pulls out. And then go ahead and resume. Okay, my entire piece of canvas is now covered and ready to turn into my glasses case. What I'm going to do first, though, is take scissors and kind of clean up all these uh, little nubs that are sticking off the side. So I want to be very careful not to cut my thread and not to cut the smooth part of the canvas, but just clean it up a little bit so there's no pokey sticking out. Probably could do this before the project as well and it would be smarter, but I didn't think of it. There we go. That looks a lot better. So then I'm going to fold it in half with my ugly side on the inside, obviously. And then take I still have the thread hanging off. If you don't, you're going to want to, you know, feed it underneath and get it hooked in there before you start this step. So I'm going to go over and back through. And this is how we're wrapping our edge and turning it into a container shape. There we go. And the next hole and then through the back, see? I have a, a lot of yarn because I didn't want to have to re-thread my needle in the middle of this, so make sure you have a nice long piece to work with, even though it will be a little obnoxious to keep pulling it all through. So back through both of them again. And see, you're just wrapping it over the outside. Ah, kitty! My entire edge has now been wrapped, and I have the yarn sticking out of the corner. So then you're just going to continue around and wrap the short edge as well. Now that you're completely wrapped, you're going to take your piece of yarn that's coming out of the corner and tuck it back in here the best you can. Try to catch it under as much of that binding as you can fit your needle through. Could be tricky depending how tight you pulled it. All right, that was tricky. I had to kind of wiggle the needle to get it to come through. So now I'm pulling all my extra yarn up into there so it's hidden. At least I know it's going to be hard for it to pop out because it's so tight. So then you're going to carefully cut off your end and then just kind of wiggle it under there. So now the last thing we have to do is make this outer edge look nice. You're going to take your needle, slide it up through several loops. You'll have to wiggle it through because it could be tight. There we go. And make sure you don't pull your end all the way through. Hold on to it. And then instead of wrapping both parts together, you're only going to wrap a single edge. So don't seal it shut, but you're going to do the exact same thing you did on the edge that you sealed shut. So 
see. I'm just going to wrap all the way around this edge. And then when you're finished, you're going to tuck it back down in the same looping. My entire open edge is now wrapped, so I'm going to take the needle with the leftover thread and pass it down the spine, getting it again through as many loops as I can. It's a really tight fit, so I think I'm only going to get it that far. And try to wiggle your needle through. Here we go, I think I managed to wiggle it. Pull it through. Trim it and check it out. At first, I was actually kind of like, really, they sent this simple of a craft project, but now that it's taken me probably about three hours to complete it, I actually find myself really proud of my work. And let's see how the glasses fit in there. Yep, glasses fit just fine. I probably could have made it a little deeper or bigger and then used it for sunglasses instead but I'm really proud of the job I did on this project and I've got a sheet and a half of leftover canvas and I've got a full skein and probably another half skein of yarn left so plenty of other things I could try playing around and making like coasters or those other ideas that were on this card. Thank you for watching my video. I hope it helped you out if you were looking for how to do this craft or if you're just becoming interested in Darby Smart and would like to sign up for the subscription box, please use my referral link. It gets me a credit which allows me to keep making this vid these videos and um, I will also post a code that will get you a discount off your first order. Uh, if you enjoy my channel, please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching Nicole Does Stuff.